Hi guys, it's Paul from Rider Ventures. So currently I'm working on a mate's 12 volt system in his 2017 Mazda BT50. Uh, it's got a canopy on the back, currently running a 100 amp AGM battery. Uh, we're gonna swap that up for a lithium later on. Uh, it's charged by a 25 amp Red Arc VC DC charger just through the alternate at the moment. Given the dimensions of the top of the canopy, it's got some work bars on there. Just so happens to be that the new kick-ass 170 watt panel is a dead fit for what we wanted. So I'll run you through a few specs of the panel. Uh, it's brand new to kick-ass and then we'll do a little installation as well. Cheers. All right, so here's the panel itself. Uh, I really like that it came double boxed. I believe you had a lot of issues with damage in transit. I have had a few issues where panels have turned up either scratched or damaged one way or another, and I've had to set them back and it's just a waste of everyone's time. Uh, it looks really nice. I do like the powder coated black aluminium frame. It looks a lot nicer than the white ones. Uh, it's gonna suit the vehicle a lot more too, just blend in a little bit, a bit more low profile. So on the box, the specifications, 170 watt, uh, putting out 18.4 volts, which anyone that has the kick-ass DC-DC charger will know. Uh, the voltage on that, the input isn't very high, so this will be compatible with that charger. You won't have any high voltage issues. So a max of nine amps, which is pretty good. Obviously that's under perfect conditions, but I mean, if you're running a fridge and lights and stuff like that, this will be more than sufficient enough to charge your battery up by the end of the day. So it's a good size, uh, 170 watt. The dimensions are pretty handy for where we're gonna place it. It's gonna fit nicely. So lengthwise, it's 1,315 mil by 690 wide and only 35 mil thick. So uh, it's got enough frame there that's gonna protect the panel underneath, give it a good airflow and reduce the heat. In terms of heat, the specifications say that you can run this minus 40 up to 85 degrees. Um, that 85 degrees sounds pretty high, however mounting on top of a canopy, middle of summer, the heat will get up pretty quick and then reduce the efficiency of your panel. So 85 is a good temperature to be working with. And kick ass state that the normal operating temperature for this panel is about 47 degrees, which is pretty good. All right, so on the back is a short amount of cable with these two waterproof connectors. Uh, these are great. You won't have any issue with them if they're already part of your system, they're just plug and play. However, on the builds that I like to do, I swap them out for an Anderson plug. That way, if we have any issues with breaking the panel, um, I can always plug in a second panel directly into that Anderson plug on top of the roof or wherever it may be, and then away we go. No issues with having to swap over connectors or being caught out that way. All right, so to swap these over is really quick and easy. Just give ourselves a little bit of room to work with. Uh, these two connectors, obviously, Red's gonna be your positive, black your negative. Just take them off. So those connectors were waterproof. So just to reduce any water ingress into the back of our Anderson plug and any possible corrosion in the future, I just like to slip a little bit of heat shrink on. Um, just get that bit more watertight. So strip back your wire. So it's handy just to make sure that when your Anderson goes on, that your little lugs here uh, are pointing out the right way, just so there's no issues. So slide that on. Well, that's nice and tight. Make sure that wire's in there nice and snug. It's not gonna come out at any stage. Uh, obviously, giving a, we're on a four drive. We don't want that to rattle out. Make sure it's nice and snug. Again, just check that wire.
So just make sure when you put your heat shrink on, it's going to be low enough that you're not going to interfere with the contact of that joiner there inside the Anderson plug. So just slip that on. So that's honestly a really quick and easy um, change of connectors there. It just makes life a little bit easier when you've got a generic Anderson plug, which you can then swap over if you do have any issues. So just for that little bit of minimal effort, um, I would recommend... <clears throat> so just for a little bit of minimal effort, swapping those connectors over to an Anderson plug, I do find it super handy. Like I said, if you do damage this panel, uh, unfortunately when you're out somewhere, but you do have a spare panel, it's just a matter of clicking that panel back in via your Anderson plug and away you go. All right, so there is an optional mounting bracket kit. It doesn't actually come with the panel. I think it's about 20 bucks extra. Uh, in that kit, you've got the four aluminum solar brackets. Um, again, black, which is good, nice and low profile. Four threaded aluminum mounting brackets. Uh, a whole bunch of nuts and bolts. So there's eight M6 bolts, eight M6 bolts at 16 mil. Uh, this one's a 40 mil. You also get eight self-tapping screws. 12 stainless steel nuts, 12 stainless steel washers, and 12 stainless steel spring washers. Um, so handy little kit. We're not going to use this uh, for this job. So for this one, I'm going to use some rib nuts uh, and the mounting brackets, and then we're just going to bolt those straight onto the top of the canopy. So it's been a couple of weeks since we did the install. Uh, the panel's held up really well. So my mate's taken it off-road a fair few times, been camping for four days. So in those four days, he's running the exterior steady lights, a couple of interior LEDs, charging little things like phones and stuff, uh, as well as a 12 volt oven and an 85 litre upright fridge. So the panel was the only source of input, wasn't running the vehicle at the time, so no power coming from the alternator. The panels managed to keep up with all those devices and keep the battery completely charged, which is fantastic. Uh, at the moment, clear blue sunny skies, couldn't ask for better conditions, battery's just over 90% and it's putting in about 6 amps at the moment. So a little bit down from that rated 9, but however the charge is only asking for 6 at the moment given the voltage level of the battery. So although it's only been a few weeks, uh, there's no issues with the mounting, the framework or the glass on the panel. 
So hopefully that's a good indication of longevity of it. It has been off-road, it's been through a few conditions that would have tested a little bit, like I said, only a few weeks, but yeah, good indication that the panel's gonna hold up at this stage. Okay, so that was just a quick and easy install video for the Kick-Ass 170 watt fixed solar panel. Uh, if you have any questions about the panel itself or how we did the install, throw a comment down below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. If there is any issues with this panel down the track, I'll also update the comment section. But otherwise, thanks for watching.